This is northern New South Wales, up here, Mount Warning. This little area here is the heart of an ancient supervolcano that was probably largely responsible for a huge formation of the landmass in Australia. The mountain I'm sitting under right now, Mount Wellington in, in Hobart, I believe was actually as far as the vents extended out and uh, it was a super volcano. That said and done, this super volcano has created the most rich life filled area that one could possibly dream for. Uh, the closest one could even think of to getting to a, a heaven on earth is where you've got these rich volcanic soils. Up the north of Tassie, there are rich volcanic soils that look so chocolatey and yummy that you could almost jump the fence and eat it. It is that delicious looking soil that things can't help but grow in it. And they grow so well and abundantly. Now a little bit of a brief, quick history. Up here, I've mentioned that um, Yukai is actually Yukai 1, named after the United Kingdom and the involvement. Now, I wanted to get take it back to the 70s here with a brief little bit of information that I've um, been talking to, to people about the history of the area and everything. That back in the 70s, the CIA. Yes, the CIA. Well, it's not unusual to think the CIA because the CIA are at Pine Gap and, well, the CIA were involved with um, Gough Whitlam's sacking. I mean, they've had involvement in Australia for many decades. There's a reason we are part of the Five Eyes and we are so much uh, America's little bitch. They come in here to Australia and they set up the operations they want to set up. And if you've watched anything on the CIA, you also know that they don't have any oversight in their own country, so they certainly don't have any in ours. The last person that actually tried to look inside Pine Gap and see what was going on was Gough Whitlam. He was going to call for... He was calling for disclosure... This is in our country, we want to know what's going on. Even the politicians aren't allowed to know what's going on. There are foreign nationals that have taken control of Pine Gap and they have done so for decades and decades in opposition to Australian citizens. But back in the 70s, the CIA came into this area and it's a story you've probably heard in many places where they took over the illegal drug trade. Because as you can understand, being rich volcanic soil, there's lots of bush, there's also lots of pot growing, and it's, it's a commerce. It's an illegal trade. Nimbin, um, the laneway boys, you know, Mwoolambar actually has more than uh, Nimbin, but um, people tend to know that Nimbin is is kind of the place to go where you get all your different drugs. Um, a lot of the locals will buy, um, grow a crop, come in for the festival once a year and get rid of it. And this is why the cops also do their concentrated efforts at certain times. So it's not an unusual thing to know that um, the drug trade is completely um, operated through the police force and controlled through the police force. And this was implemented in the larger area back in the 70s. So for the last 40, 50 years, this whole area has been under CIA control. And the drug trade, the illegal drug trade, is controlled through that as well. So to a huge area that does appeal for people that do have the mindset like me where you want to live more in connection with nature 
more in harmony. I mean, this whole area has got such a spirit about it. It's, it's special. It's special country. And there is a certain tranquility that comes just from being connected to the land in living in that area. And even in the experiences that I had with all the adversity around me, I was always able to escape back into nature and release that negativity. I mean, I was there at one stage, I was by the, the river, the platypuses would uh, be my neighbours. You know, they played in the same area I played. And connected to nature, all the beautiful butterflies. And, and here's an interesting thing. If you've wondered why butterflies have reduced in numbers, I found out in the community where I was living in what actually protects butterflies and why they have reduced so much is that the caterpillar uh, stage of the butterfly is vulnerable when it doesn't have adequate plants to shelter from being picked off by birds. One of those plants that is good for breeding, uh, protecting caterpillars is actually the scotch thistle. Thistles, anything prickly, protects the caterpillars from birds that would come in and feed on them. So they there, there's then a larger amount that can then breed to maturity and actually become butterflies, which is why you can see more butterflies where there's thistles. And even the horses will come along and just eat that little bit out of the top of the thistle. Now, in Tasmania, they are a declared pest because once they get into the wool of the sheep, it's almost impossible to get it out and it completely ruins the fleece. So it's a declared weed here. And the place I was staying at, it was growing everywhere. And there were all different sorts of butterflies. I've never seen so many butterflies. So if you want to see butterflies start to come back, maybe you should think about what kind of a home that protects them so that they can be bred past the caterpillar and turn into that beautiful butterfly. But anyway, I'll get off that subject because I don't want to make this a long one. This is more an update around the Mount Burrell area and the community. Now, as, you can, as I've said, this is very rich volcanic soil. Things can't help but grow in it. And you can see all the green tinges everywhere. This little coffee cup is the Sphinx Rock Cafe. We're going to actually talk about that in a minute and the Mount Burrell Business District because I've uh, been able to identify a bit more information about what's going on with that. Now, this here is 3222 Kyogle Road. This is where they've set up their little tribal laws and land has been gifted that isn't even owned. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's going on with that. I uh, won't get into that right now. Just take a look at this land here. Look how dead it is. I've brought this up before. But this is the kind of care that they actually take. Now, see this bit here that's actually green? There's a reason that's green. Because that actually belongs to somebody else. That's not part of the development. And you can see that the landowner is actually looking after the land. Unlike all of this, which is dead. It's dead. This is rich volcanic soil that cannot help but want to grow things. And they've killed it. That is clear evidence that they are not looking after the land and that the environmental impact studies that were done are clearly not indicative of what has actually been done to the land. I would even suggest that maybe the council should come in and have a look and see at how much destruction has been done to the land. There are conditions that they have to uphold. All the other landowners seem to be able to know what they're doing, but these people, they've bared up the soil. They've killed anything growing there. That takes a special kind of neglect. But let's take a look at this community when they 
have their little come down, they come out the gate here, they come along, and here's the Mount Burrell Business District. Talked about this before, this is the Sphinx Rock Cafe, the general store, little servo, fruit and veggie shop that is no longer um, tenanted, and the Mount Burrell Caravan Park. Now, I had brought up in the past that the community are showing that um, this address, 3220, is the address of the community. And I said, how could that be? Well, how can it be is that through a member company, they purchased this land and the businesses became tenants of the community. Now, it was a thriving business area, except for the caravan park, which was having a few issues. That was back four years ago. Um, but it, it's also not a place that was heavily inundated with people to try and get into it. I know I actually went there at one stage and they said, no, we're not, um, we're not open. So ultimately, the grass was fairly long. It was neglected. But... Um, this I want to focus on the business area as it is today. Now I've done a search in the past, we've found out that the Sphinx Rock Cafe, oops, over this side, the, here, is, um, is a, there's an ABN registered for the Sphinx Rock Cafe for the Squires as a family partnership. They've been operating that since 2004. Um, they're no longer there now they've walked away from it. Uh, already we know that the fruit and veggie store, they've walked away from that too and the claimed reason is that there was a death in the family and they didn't want to come back. But we're told all different stories from these members of the nightcap community so one has to take that with a grain of salt and what the truth really is. I mean you wouldn't say well, they didn't want to come back because they didn't like us and they couldn't work with us. But, I mean, that's not good PR, is it? Especially when you're a real estate agent or a promoter or a developer trying to sell the good, not the bad. So there's a reason I'm focusing on the uh, Mount Burrell business community is because it once was thriving. All those businesses were operating. And the Sphinx Rock Cafe was, I mean, daily. You've got tourists calling in there. It is a tourist destination to call in there and have a look at the Sphinx Rock Cafe, be right under, you know, the heart of Wollumbin. And not only that, its locals also know the place very well. Now, I did hear some rather disparaging remarks from one of the developers about it, and I thought, well, why would you ridicule it? I mean, this is a gorgeous place with gorgeous people in it, and he's been a bit of a dick about it. Yeah, well, he's a bit of a dick anyway, but uh, we won't worry about him. Let's look at the condition that the business district is in now. The people that have been in there since 2004, um, I'm assuming, are the squires because there's no change in the business uh, uh, listing, the register. So I'm assuming it's the squires that have walked away from it because as tenants, not all of us like dealing with the landlords that we have. And so we choose you know, as much as what we love something or we might love the place where we're living, we walk away from it because they've just turned it into a nightmare. Now, this is only surmising what might have gone on to make someone walk away from a flourishing business that they love. Maybe they just had enough of the business and they wanted to retire. But uh, that's not what... Uh, the Bush Telegraph tells me. What is going on with the Sphinx Rock Cafe now, now that it's not actually a cafe, I've been told is now where the real estate hub for the community has set up and Richard Moat 
now uses it as the call centre to bring in people. Now, I've heard about an incident that happened at the general store at Mount Burrell. Now, again, this is another tenant. Um, I'll just I'll bring up his record. Yes, Jason Scott Dittmer, and here's the um, Sphinx Rock Cafe, 2004, since they've been operating, family partnership. And this Jason Scott Dittmer, since the 11th of December 2018, he's been operating the Mount General Store, a Mount Burrell General Store, and he's been leasing it as a tenant of the landowners, which is the Nightcap community. Now, on a regular basis, they bring in prospective investors into the community on a little bus and introduce them to the general store and the broader community and the people in it and you know, want to show them, oh, isn't this lovely? These are such nice people and warm. Well, the thing is that the only people that seem to like them, the community, are the people in the community themselves. They don't seem to be very well liked by anyone else in the broader community. So when you bring in people, and uh, like Richard Mote and Adrian Brannock and Philip Dixon have been told to do, uh, been said to have done, to bring in people to the general store to introduce them. Now there are people working in this general store that are from the general community. They have just as many rights of freedom of speech and to have concerns about their cons community heard and not be shut down by a few voices that just don't like what they're saying. Now, there is validity in what they're saying. But let's uh, skip to the point where you have people that come into a shop and these people are interested in investing in the community. Now, let's take a hypothetical scenario here where someone in the shop may turn around directly to one of those potential investors or someone in that group and say something to them about their concerns, their opinion and their freedom to express that in a public place to whoever they wish, that the community is not what you expect it's going to be. You will find out that there are a lot of pitfalls on the other side that they didn't tell you about. Well, the thing is that that's actually a direct confrontation that actually requires a direct response. And you will get one from those that are trying their damnedest to shut down any free expression of anyone else's opinion in the community that doesn't agree with what is going on at the nightcap community. You don't want it in the area, they don't want to hear from you and they don't want anyone else to hear from you either. Your opinion is not allowed to be heard. So that's if you go about it the direct way. But in this hypothetical situation that um, you might have a few people in the store already when these tour buses come in and it's not, it's actually quite rude if you're having a conversation within your little group about the concerns up there on the hill and uh, what they're doing and how they've been treating other people and you're having a private conversation with your friend in that shop that can be overheard by those coming into the shop, this is not a direct attack. And it's not even something that someone can turn around and say, excuse me, you can't say that. It's a matter of, excuse me, I wasn't talking to you, but out of our private conversation. So, 
that is one way that you can say something that can be heard and get a message across without it coming back on you as, hey, you said something to this person and you put them off. Actually, no, I didn't. I was having a conversation with my friend and you so rudely interrupted it. Switch it around a bit. Now, there's another little area of weakness too, is that where there's one of us, we are always vulnerable, but where there is more than one, we become stronger. Now, I know that when I was um, going to the Yukai shop all the time, I used to love looking at the community board. You know, all the different various posts that the community members put up. It's just a lovely way of bringing the community together. Now, if one person is speaking out and putting something on a, on a community board, that person becomes a target. Whereas, if there are multiple postings, different ones from different people, that then becomes a larger voice that is not so easily able to single out. And the intimidationary, intimidatory tactics that are going on to silence your right to free expression of your opinion and concerns in your community and to share with your community your concerns. Well, let's just say it is not up to anyone that might be sitting in this building here that may be associated with the owners of the land that these tenants are leasing to actually suppress free speech. Free speech is being suppressed in Mount Burrell because these developers will get a lawyer on to anyone that they can identify and that speaks out against it and they will threaten them with over a million dollars worth of it could reach this and you could be up for this. You know, they're scare letters and honestly, they're, they're pushing the boundaries of even, yeah, that's really pushing the definition of how you can actually try and associate one thing with a completely separate thing. But... This is what lawyers are paid to do. Write intimidatory letters, scare people, bluff you so that you will shut up. This is a common tactic that's been employed. Not only that, but it's also been employed that, um, oh, I've heard quite a few uh, different uh, remarks about how people have been approached by um someone representing the community co trying to coerce them into making a statement which would implicate Julia Norman as breaking the um, conditions set down by the court. Now everything that I've heard is that um, Julia Norman has been abiding by every condition laid down by the court that any accusation that's been made against her for breaching of these has been made as a deliberate attempt to implicate her in actions that she has not participated in and to get others to sign sw sworn statements that she did these things. This has been an ongoing harassment for her. So I believe, I don't actually know that that's 100% the case because um, there's only so much of what I am saying that I can confirm without other people confirming that this is the case. So there is widespread knowledge that this is what's been going on, that people have been physically threatened and intimidated, and then they have also had acts of well, threats carried out on them. And it is not isolated to just one person. They are employing all different means and methods to maintain 
the narrative that they have created around what this development is supposed to be. So I'm going to leave it up there today. I uh, didn't want to make this a long one. I just wanted to let the members of the larger community that do not like what's going on, that some of the ways that individuals are getting attacked within your community, you can help each other out by not making it easy to not be a singular person and to not also say anything directly to any of the investors. You can be out in the car park when the bus pulls in. You can be having a conversation with a group of people or friends and be overheard. This is how you say what you say and it is none of anybody else's business that they are over over listening you know they are actually being rude if they are listening to your conversation if they dare say anything you tell them that this is a private conversation go away if they say i'm objecting to what you're saying or saying well too bad i'm not saying it to you but now i'm objecting to what you're saying because you are not invited and you are not welcome think about the ways that you can deal with people that it was nothing that you were directing at them. It was none of their business and now you're the ones turning around and making it my business. You're picking on me? Go away. Nanya. I wasn't even talking to you. Go away. And let them try and send out a lawyer's letter on that. That their client tried interrupting your private conversation and you objected. So think about how you can be heard in saying something but not saying it directly to anybody so that it cannot be classified as you interfering with the investors. Just something to think about for all the Mount Burrell residents is that um, you can come together and be there for each other. Meet up down at the uh, shop, you know, at certain times. They're doing regular tours meet up down there if you have to you know spend a little bit of time with your friends take a chair and sit there and and wait wait for the right opportunity it's not illegal to have a private conversation and suppression of free speech is going to stop more than one sign needs to go up on your community board you need to create a little bit of an organisation around that too. On a regular basis, every day someone goes in and puts up 10 different ones that are from 10 different people. Work together, create your own flyer, notice, stick it, do a couple of copies, you know, like there's a group of you together. You all do up, yeah, this is what I want to say and say, yeah, I'm happy with that. Do 10 copies. And then each day, one of those 10 copies goes and gets stuck up on the board because you know they're going to pull it down. So regularly put them up. And don't make it one target. Make it heaps of targets that they can go for. That's a lot more money to send your letters to say, shut your mouth, isn't it? So make more targets. And also... You don't need to be so bold and say who you are. They hide behind anonymity. They use it. They take advantage of it. It's time that you started using their own tricks against them. You hide behind that anonymity too. Yeah, you've got the guts to be honest. But you're not playing with honest people. So you've got to start playing a, a bit by their rules. Being anonymous, don't put your name on it. Have your say and let them wonder who said it. Let them set up cameras to try and video who's leaving all these posts. Let them start incriminating themselves in the kind of surveillance and suppression of free speech that is contrary 
to the laws in Australia, to even human existence, and contrary to the do no harm philosophy of this community. Do no harm? Wow, look at that dead land. Just look at that dead land. Take a look at that beautiful little green spot there, though. That's what all of that should look like. These people have killed the land. It's, it's visual. You can see it. That is proof they are not looking after the land. They haven't got a clue how to look after the land. It's time to move them off. Nobody wants them there. And ultimately, you need to start, as I said, not making a single target and not making a target that can be identified. Start playing by their rules. It's the only way you're going to beat them. And trust me, they're already worried enough. There's enough going on that I am not going to be able to disclose right here. But there is light at the end of the tunnel, Mount Burrell. There is. And it's not the headlights of an oncoming train ready to knock you over. It's sunlight. It's daylight. It is freedom. Freedom from the oppression of having your voice in your community suppressed because of a few people that don't like what you're saying. Keep speaking out. More of you speak out. And when you do, don't do it alone. Be in a group. As I said, there are ways to protect yourself. Start doing it. Be smarter than them which isn't too hard because you've got an advantage they don't have. You're a good person and you know what is the difference between right and wrong. You want to get rid of them. All you have to do is start becoming together. Be the community that these people say that they are and they've got all this, you know, do no harm and respect the land and country and all of that. Well, I tell you what, what would the ancestors be saying right now if they were looking at that dead ground? I tell you what, the ancestors are not happy. And they better be careful where they walk on the ground of the ancestors in their hypocrisies the land protects those that look after it I have told this in previous stories seriously my ass has quite literally been saved twice by mother nature I don't know how but it happened that's a story on a past video I might retell it again but this one is long enough the land is a living organism it's got energy it's vibrant when you kill it you kill it uh, like you they have in this area. The rest of the land around it responds. It's much like when a virus invades the body. Eventually, the body repels the virus. You know, Mount Burrell community, you are the body. All you have to do is repel the virus. It's easy to do if you do it together. Don't make singular targets and be anonymous. Do not give them any more ammunition to fire at people. Take away their ammunition. Take away their ability to threaten and start standing firm in your free speech. You have a right to your opinion. I tell you what, I am so angry that these people have got the nerve to think that they can oppress other people's opinions that they don't like. Who the hell do they think they are? But then this is exactly what I've said about these communities. That if you think that the rules that the government have is oppressive, just wait till you get inside one of these communities and the rules that, oh, 
they are so much more oppressive. You would actually appreciate the freedom of going back out into the structure that you tried to escape from. Oh yes, there are far greater oppressions when you have people that try and set up their own little country, their own little rules that you've got to live by. Have a group mentality, a herd mentality. Now this, by every definition, is a cult. It has a religious philosophy, it has a mindset, a group mentality, and it is acting out in behaviours that are not free to all other people to be able to express their own life without being oppressed by this cult. They are a cult. They are very much a cult. A cult surrounding the religion of tribalism, sovereignty, this Eudaki principles that what do no harm, this is all hypocrisy. And the hypocrisy ends when we keep calling it out and they've got no lies left to hide behind. And it's, it's unravelling for them. It is. Know that it is. The quicker it can happen quicker if you bring it out as a group in opposition to those that are trying to quieten your voice, suppress your right to free speech, suppress your opinion in the community because somehow your opinion isn't worth as much as theirs and they're the only ones that could possibly have it right. No, this cult has had its day of oppressing people. It's on its last legs. It's going to take a bit to pull the other legs out from underneath it. And it can happen quicker if we work together. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that and say goodbye. Take it easy.